Hi and welcome or welcome back to the Big Net Energy YouTube channel. My name's Sammy and this is episode 41 of my Fiber podcast. This week I don't really have any finished objects for you unless you want to count my crochet squares for the blanket that I am making that was inspired by Haley from Loch Knit's um, crochet blanket. She shared it on, on the Prickly Stitch podcast and I do have a lot of acquisitions that are actually yarn, which is um, abnormal for me as of late, but we will get started. I will start with my crochet squares, cause why not? So all the ones I had previously finished, which I think I had like 24 finished, um, I have blocked. Um, and I, in the past two weeks, I've made, I think, 14 more. Um, so this is yarn. I think this is like a Cascade sock yarn. Um, leftover from an Oslo hat. This is a yarnable uh, by Hypnotic Yarns in last year's October color, which was the Raven. Um, and I made my niece socks in that. The Oslo hat I had made out of the green was for a different niece. This is um, Unicorn, Hobie Unicorn, um, which is a sock yarn. And I don't know the colorway name. It's just a solid blue. This is this is the second mini from the Crafted by the Fates I Never Knew My Father sock set. So this is the purple for Dory's eyes. I already did the, the orange um, in the last podcast, it was already done. Um, this is Wanderluck Fibers. I think the colorway might be Daylily, but I made a, what is that? Salty Air Tea by Samantha Guerin in this. So I was really trying to catch up on my past scraps so that I wouldn't have to like dig through all my squares to see um, which ones I had or hadn't made. So I just pulled all the ones out. And then as I made the square, I put the scrap back away. So these are all larger, from larger scraps for the most part. Um, let me separate out the ones that are not. Those ones. All right, this is uh, Emma's yarn in the colorway Plant Lady, and I got this in Ohio, in Cleveland, um, when I was there for work, and it's really cute. I made socks out of this. I have enough to make more socks. This one is a colorway that I dyed on a Novad 7525 Berry Yarn Base. Um, I do not recommend it very splitty and it doesn't really get soft even when you wash it. It is pretty durable though because I have socks that haven't filled at all with it. Um, but yeah, it just doesn't feel nice. And yes, I dyed this. I call the colorway toothpaste. This is Pretty Twisted Yarns I Would Tie Dye For You in her lavish base? No, not lavish. Heck, it's sparkly. I have it right here. The tag of it right here. It is, now I didn't write the name of the base, but it's the one with Lurex, so it's sparkly. This is, did I drop everything else? No. This one is um, a w older woman of a kind colorway from Crafted by the Fates called Strainbow. I knit, I test knit a sock. I'm not gonna knit the other one. Um, and I'll show you guys that sock later. And then these are all from my Super Glow Fibers Advent. Um, originally I was just going to make a, I split each 20 gram into 10 gram, two 10 gram halves. And um, I was going to make a, what is it called? Habitation throw. Um, but it wouldn't really have been big enough. I don't know if I misread the yarn requirements. So I'm just going to add all kinds of scraps to it now. So it's just going to be a crazy blanket. Um, a lot of, I chose the cuter colors to start with for the squares, but I think the blanket is overall relatively ugly. So it doesn't matter to me anyways, 
but here's one of them. This one is cute. I like this one. This one is really pretty. Um, it's not a yarn I would normally pick though. This one is also very cute. And then these two are my favorite, but this one especially, this is my favorite color from the advent. Very cute. And then this one's also pretty cute, but most of the colors, uh, I'm, they don't look that nice together in my opinion. So I hardly ever work on that blanket, but I think having it as like a larger scrap stash buster is going to be nice. So there's my 14 squares. I'm going to weave in the ends and then wash and block these. And then I might start joining my squares. Um, because I will have 48 of them, I think. Um, it's not going to be enough to make the blanket, but it would be nice to start. So there's my squares. Next project, weaving and ends. Um, I'll just set those here. And then I'll show you guys that sock I test knit. Here's the strain bell left over. Um, here is the sock I test knit. Um, this is called the Sally sock, I believe. Um, the pattern is not out yet. It was not a great testing experience. Um, but the color looks really nice with black. It was crafted by the face yarn. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna knit the other one. It's not really my style anyways, so. And then um, another whip I have is I finished spinning this bat from Fossil Fibers. Oh shit, I left the tag for what the fiber content was. So I'll go grab that. But this is just a really fine single that I spun. It's from like a 2.15 ounce bat or something like that but hopefully you guys can see it. I'm not very good at knowing where the camera is. Let me go grab the tag real quick. I guess the tag was right behind me the whole time. I was right, it's 2.15 ounces. Um, this was a Bewilderbeast bat and it is Rommeldale Farm Wool Fin farm wool, bamboo, sari silk, and wool naps. So there's that. I was thinking about chain plying it. Um, I think if I did a two ply, it would still be a lace weight. I'm not sure. So I, I think I might chain ply it, but I haven't really decided. Okay. Next up is a whip that you guys have already seen. Um, this is the Jelly Cube. It is a cardigan I am test knitting for Cat Weaver, who used to be Heather and Hops on YouTube. And I believe she was Heather and Hops on Instagram also, but she changed both of them to Cat Weaver, uh, which is good because I used to have a hard time remembering Heather and Hops. Um, so this is how far I am so far. Um, I had started the back panel last time, but um, I did block it and my gauge was too big so this is a very long and cute cardigan I'm trying to keep slipping around on my needles um you should definitely go look at cat weaver's instagram she has a photo of hers on there and um it is going to be quite long so it's going to take me a while but i'm knitting this in um Bird Street yarn. Yeah. Let me see if I have labels. Nope. All right, so I'll tell you guys the second one. I have the, the mohair is Drops Kid Silk in the colorway pistachio ice cream. Um, the number for the color is 47. And then the this part, uh, she said you could use for the main right here, uh, whatever weight you wanted that you could achieve gauge with, but she knit her sample with DK. Um, and I kind of wish I'd held this yarn double because I have enough of it and it's a really fine yarn. Let me grab the label. Yeah. 
Okay, so uh, it's Bird Street yarn in the colorway chiffon. It's a four ply 75 25 superwash merino um, nylon, and it's really thin. I don't love this base, but I wish I held a double, but it'll be better because I live in a hot climate probably to have it lighter weight. Um, so far I'm really enjoying the pattern and I'm just really excited for the finished object. Oh, speaking of my ugly super glow blanket, let me show you. There it is so far, my habitation throw. Okay, next is a new cast on that you guys haven't seen and it's going to be hard to show because I have it incredibly scrunched up, but this is the Miserina. Um, I forget the designer's name, but I am knitting this. I'll, I'll put it somewhere. The Miserina. Um, I saw Tracy from the Grocery Girls podcast knitting it. And um, I am knitting mine in Crafted by the Fates yarn, main color, and Nowhere News. And this is on the Impressionist base, which is a 75-25. And then my contrast color is, sorry, Spin Cycle Yarns Dyed in the Wool in the colorway Love Spell. And I am doing, I did do some yarn management because I was knitting it and a lot of the the pink and stuff had a like a whole ply of gray. So it was like one ply colored, one ply gray. This was it. I ended up ripping back after I had like half the, I had like to here done and I ended up ripping it out. And this is what I took out. As you can see, it's pretty low contrast. It wasn't showing up. I will insert a picture so you can see how much it was not showing up. And I'm really glad I did because now it just looks so much cuter. It's really standing out more. You can see what it is. Before you couldn't really tell it was a flower. It's still not a high contrast, but because like the, when I put the picture in black and white of these colors next to each other, it's not like a huge contrast, but I do think because you have like a complete gray to a color, it, it's enough for me. It's a nice subtle color work. Um, but I'm really enjoying the pattern. It had some lace, it has little cables, and some um, just color work in the yoke. And then I believe there's texture or lace in the body, but it's like a really simple one. So that is my miserina so far. Um, I probably would be done with the chart if I hadn't ripped back, but it's cute and I'm happy with it. So. Let me see, let me see, show you some labels. This is the old Crafted by the Fates label. This is, like I said, the impression in a space, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And the colorway Nowhere News, which is from the Courage the Cowardly Dog collection. I was going to buy four skeins of it, but there weren't four left, like right away. And so I only got two. And then here is the Spin Cycle Dyed in the Wool label. This is 100% American Wool Superwash, 200 yards sport weight, and colorway Love Spell. So this has been my like on the go knitting and the Jelly Cube has been my at home knitting. Um, but like I have been crocheting a lot of squares at home. Um, like one and I, I guess. And yeah. Yes. I also um tried well, I also tried my drum carter that I just recently got. I ordered it back in the beginning of February and it didn't get here until like July. Was it July? It might have been the end of June. I'm not sure. But here is a bat of my first hand processed fleece. 
This is a Jacob wool and it is from Meridian Jacobs, which is, ooh, it's so squishy, which is in Northern California, I believe. And I'm gonna unroll it so I can show you guys. And um, this is just the part that was really mixed where I was having a hard time separating the black and the white wool. Um, most of the black wool was really mixed and so I couldn't really separate it very easily anyways. But I thought it would make for a cool bat. And that's it. Um, so I need to flick the rest of the multicolored locks so I can make bats out of them. I need to get the VM out. There's a ton of VM in it. Um, there's still VM in the bat, but a lot less than there would be. And it's not all stuck in my drum carter. If I didn't flick the locks, it would just all get stuck in my drum carter or stay in the bat. And that's the second fiber I was carding. The first fiber I was carding was one of my carding kits from Green Goat Ranch in the colorway Frushi. Um, I don't really feel like opening this, so I will insert a picture. But I did go from more pink to less pink because the roving that they gave me um, was kind of like heavily pink on one end and pure white on the other. So I just did that for fun. Um, I might thin this really thin and then chain ply it to kind of keep the gradient. That might be cute. I haven't decided, but um, I'll insert pictures. I used all the roving, but I didn't use all the extras. Um, this was the first time using my carter. This, the other plain one was the second time. Maybe I should have gone the other way around. But I did not really know how much to put of these and I was just trying to figure out how to use the card well in general. But I'll insert a picture. They're really, really soft. Um, I think I could have filled the card more each time. Some of these are pretty skinny bats. Um, moving on to acquisitions, I guess. I don't remember if I showed this on the last episode and I tried scrolling through the episode without like watching the whole thing and I didn't see this, but I really might have showed it last time and I can't remember. This is um, Crofter by the Fates Yarn and this is the Colorway Homesick. It's a mini set and this was from um, the Destination like collab that a bunch of dyers did. So. I freaking talk about this? I don't remember, but um, I really like this. The colors are so cute. I mean, it's heavily green and chartreuse, so of course I like it, and it has pink and peach. Um, this is like a almost red, but I do think it's kind of pink. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's red, and I just don't know anything, but okay, it kind of looks red now. <laughs> But that is one. I also got two more skeins from Crafted by the Fates. Um, this one is a well. I don't think the name's on there. Well, this is the colorway Water Witch, which was um, a type of collab between Crafted by the Fates and Witch and Knit and Mama. And this is on the Surrealist base, which is 75% fine superwash, mer bleh, superwash merino and 25% nylon. And um, this base is really, really soft. I knit with it my um, Shark Week socks and I really like those. So. This is a super nice, moody, like stormy blue and gray. And I think I might make a tank top out of this because it's just a really wearable, nice color. And I love the variegation in it. And then this one is Summer in Spookyville. Well, it doesn't want to come off that way. And I like this. It has all the autumnal and Halloween colors. It's purple, it's green, orange, and gold. 
big fan. This one, I don't know what I'm gonna make with it yet. There's that. And then, my big haul was from Chromatic Yarns because, well, she just had an update and she has Critical Role inspired yarn as well as just Dungeons and Dragons inspired yarn. Critical Role is voice actors playing Dungeons and Dragons and they play it on YouTube and Twitch and uh, it's originally live so you can interact and stuff with them on Twitch. They don't interact with you but you can chat. Um, but the first one is called Hamster Unicorns and this one is inspired by Campaign 2 of Critical Role. I have not watched Campaign 2 so um, I'm not 100% sure but I feel like this might be Jester related. I'm not not positive. Maybe it's not. I'm just I feel like cutting that out but this is from um, the Corner of Craft and she is in the UK which is why I ordered six skeins. I was originally trying to pare down but then when I saw how much shipping was I figured I would just order quite a bit. So this is Hamster Unicorns on the Merino Sock Base which is 85% Superwash Merino 15% Nylon which is one of my favorite um, fiber contents for sock yarn because it's just incredibly soft and plump. But here it is in all its glory. It's super speckly, super pink. I might make a tank top out of this too because it's so cute. And then I wasn't planning on getting that one originally, but it, it was really cute. I had like 10 more things in my cart and I, I was removing them. The reason I originally was like, I, I set an alarm for this update so that I would be able to get this. And this is Jelly Cube colorway, which is inspired by the monster gelatinous cube from Dungeons and Dragons. And it is not really a collaboration, but it is like um, Hannah from the Corner of Craft and Cat Weaver were talking and the colorway is the same inspiration as the cardigan, gelatinous cube, jelly cube. So I got two skins of this on BFL 4ply. It says it's 100% superwash BFL. And then I got one skein of it on Fluffy Lace, which is 72% brushed Super Kid Mohair hair and 25, or sorry, 28% Mulberry Silk. Um, this would be enough to make, I think, a slightly shorter gelatinous, or just <laughs> jelly cube cardigan, but I'm already gonna have one green one, so I don't think I'll make a second green one. I do have like a peachy pink one I might make though. It's yet to be set, decided, but I did wanna have the mohair just in case. super cute and then these two really got me and this is inspired by campaign three um or bell's hells characters and i am almost caught up i didn't start watching it until i don't know maybe march or april maybe March, I started watching Critical Role. I never watched it before that. And I have already almost caught up to, I think they're on like the late sixties of episodes and each episode is usually around at four hours long. So I've done a lot of watching, but this one is called Smiley Day to You, or sorry, Smiley Day to You, which is fresh cut grass inspired. He is a chauffeur automaton or robot in campaign three. And this is on the Sparkle Sock Base, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, and 5% Lurex. And uh, he is got a lot of yellow on him, and he has a wheel, no legs, and he has some eye, blue eyes, or... Not really eyes, but lenses I guess <laughs> and then this one is called I hit things for money 
And this one is inspired by Ashton, who is a earth, uh, what are they called? Earth Genasi. Um, and so he has kind of like greenish stone skin and purple amethyst, like spiky geode hair. And uh, he's a little bit gruff. And so when him and SCG came into the show, they were beginning characters, but they started together before they met the rest of the crew. Um, you have like this kind of gruff. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say rough exterior, but he's made of pointy rock, so obviously. But him and then this like, like overly cheery automaton together, they were just funny. But I got this one on Sturdy Sock, even though it was like extra pretty on the Sparkle Sock for some reason. I think the BFL doesn't take the colors as vividly as maybe Merino does, but I wanted it on Sturdy Sock because Ashton is sturdy. So that's also why I picked Sparkle Sock on this one. There was the, the Merino Sock. Um, I took the colors really well for this one too, but there was no Merino Sock choice for this one. And these colors were a lot like muddier on the BFL base. Not in a bad way, I just wanted them to be more bright. And then if you think about it, the Lurex makes sense because he is made of metal. So to have the little shiny bits is kind of perfect, I think. Um, Sorry for just nerding out about Critical Role for so long. But that's not it for acquisitions. Yeah. I decided I wanted to do some hand quilting. Um, and now I might just use it for embroidery, to be honest. But I purchased this from... What did I purchase this from? I don't remember. I got it online. But this is a Dritz hand needle and threader set. And then I got this... Maybe I got it from Amazon. No, I don't think so. And then I got these um, silky threads, 12 weight cotton threads. And I just got this little like sample pack of like little spools so I could get the different colors. And then I also got, this is black. I also got a smaller uh, black one. This one says 12 weight also, I think. And then I got one large one in this. These are Aurafil. Aurafil? I don't know how to say that. And then I also got another one in Ecru color, I think. It doesn't say on here. But I got this from Missouri Star Quilt Company. That's who. And. I have two ideas for the hand quilting. I all obviously want to hand quilt um, because my sewing machine would suck for quilting. And I saw uh, Misfit Sock from the Prickly Stitch podcast doing it. And I thought it looked super great. And I had bought some hand quilted, like an apron and a blanket. And I just love the look of it. I like how handmade it looks. Um, and also I was considering taking some of my old work coveralls and making them into shorts, short sleeve and dyeing them black because you can't bleach them and they're dark navy and so you can't really make it any color other than black. Um, and just doing a bunch of embroidery on them. Mostly to practice embroidery and also because it might be cute, it might not, I don't know. <laughs> I would also want to probably take in like there's some like back darts. I don't know if they would be called darts when they're vertical. But there's so much space in the torso and like nowhere else. Um, I think it's just because I have a short torso, but I'm not sure. So yeah, considering doing that, but also overwhelmed by all my hobbies. So I forgot to go over my stash down update for July. Um, so I'll have to cut this back in, but for July, 2023, I started the month with 118 which is basically what I had at the end of January, I think. 
but um and i had two skeins from typical bliss which are granted they are like five months late so you know that's not really cool um i had one fua fua which is the purple i got for my tessellated and have decided against using for that and then i got the crafted mini set i just showed you guys and then the two crafted skeins um crafted by the faith skeins i just showed you guys um those arrived july 31st so they count and then i used one for one sock set which i count as one for um my uh, i never knew my father socks and i used four for the jelly cube um using one fingering white skein um and i think three 25 gram skeins of my mohair uh, if not i'll adjust it over here and then um, i used one skein for my sally socks i gave six to a friend six skeins um three of them were just like a plain white 25 gram mohair but i wanted to see her dye them so and then i used three for my miss arena so that is a net of I had six positive here, so I just didn't count that. And then I got negative nine net. And so I ended in July with 109, starting August with 109, and I already have six in. So hopefully I'll be using a lot of yarn in July to make up for it. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, that's basically all I have for you guys. And I will see you in a couple weeks. Bye.